Hey guys, welcome back to All House Plants. My name is Stephanie. Thanks for tuning in today. I know that it's been a while since I've posted a video, but today I have a video for you on plant care, specifically for the care of cast iron plants or Aspidistra aladier. Now, cast iron plants are an oldie but a goodie. They've been in the uh, house plant community for a very long time, for several decades. And as their name suggests, cast iron, that is how hardy they are. Cast iron plants are in the asparagus family. So members include the yucca plant, spider plants, uh, dracaenas, and snake plants or sansevieria. As you may well know, spider plants and snake plants are very hardy plants and cast iron plants are just the same way. They are native to Japan and Taiwan, so tropical, subtropical areas, and there are a few different varieties uh, that you can get. The first variety is the plain green, and I'll insert a picture here. There is also the variegated version, which I have sitting right here. And you can see the leaves have a lot of nice striping. There is my personal favorite, the Milky Way. This big guy right here. And it's called Milky Way because of the spots that are all over, beautiful spots, like little twinkling stars. There's also a variety that I don't have called uh, snow caps or uh, Asahi, and I'll insert a picture here. And that's a beautiful variety. I don't personally have it, but if I ever uh, saw it, I would absolutely get it. So what makes cast iron plants such a great house plant? First and foremost, uh, they tolerate low to medium light. So medium light will always be better, um, but cast iron plants are very tolerant of low light so you can put them towards the interior of a room, you can put them in a darker corner, and they will be fine. This um, Milky Way cast iron plant stays here by my fireplace, um, which is next to a window, but it never gets any direct sun at any point in the day, and this plant does fabulous in this corner. Now, something like the variegated variety that has like a little more white. See how much white is on this leaf? How much white is on this leaf? You would want to have that in a more medium light situation because of the variegation. Uh, remember that in order to support continued variegation, plants do need more bright light or a more a brighter indirect lighting situation. Uh, cast iron plants take just the normal watering once a week, once every two weeks. I normally let the top one to three inches of the soil dry out between waterings. Uh, they will droop a little bit if they start to get dry um, and the leaves will turn brown. So if you're keeping them too dry and you're seeing the leaves turn brown, you need to water them more often. If you start to see brown tips, that is a sign of overwatering, and you need to back off on the watering. I keep mine in just regular soil uh, potting mix with coca coir, perlite, and a little bit of bark, and they do just fine. Uh, again, they're very non-fussy, so just whatever kind of soil mix you have laying around is fine. Just make sure not to overwater. As far as fertilizing goes, these plants do appreciate, like any plant, um, 
fertilizing during the growing season. That being said, cast iron plants are slow growers, which means you need to be careful of over fertilizing. If you give them too much fertilizer, the leaves will burn and the plant will suffer. So with a cast iron plant, which is a naturally slow growing plant, just go easy on the fertilizer. Have or um, quarter the normal amount of fertilizer that you would normally use and you'll be just fine. As far as humidity goes, uh, they don't need any special humidity considerations. These plants are very tolerant of normal indoor conditions and temperature and humidity. Pests. There is something to be said as far as pests are concerned. They are relatively pest free. However, they are susceptible to spider mites. Um, not, as, not as susceptible as a palm tree or chiflera's. That being said, this plant has had spider mites before. And you can see some of the pocking on this older leaf uh, that was spider mite damage. And there's a little bit of pocking or speckles on this leaf. That was also some spider mite damage. I did treat the spider mites with a soap and water mixture and that was effective for treatment. Um, so just keep an eye for spider mites in the spider mite seasons, which is fall and sometimes springtime uh, and winter, definitely winter time. So just keep an eye for spider mites um, and soap and water treatment should get it. Now that being said, my Milky Way, spider, uh, Milky Way cast iron plant has never had spider mites. So sitting on the same fireplace as they are here and here, this one had spider mites, this one did not. So make of that what you will. It may just depend on the variety or the spider mites may be more attracted to a wider leaf variety like this variegated uh, cast iron plant. Propagation. Cast iron plants are easy to propagate. They spread by underground rhizome uh, or little bulb. And so that means if you want to propagate or make a baby plant, all you have to do is take the mother plant and um, break a chunk off with your hands um, and snap a few rhizomes off. This big plant has already been propagated once and I split it in half and you can see it's already grown in and to fill up this pot you can't even tell that it was half a plant at one point so with the right light conditions uh, and care conditions and just with time you can have a big full luscious cast iron plant um, as far as special considerations are concerned there really are no special considerations for cast iron plants. Again, just to reiterate that they are wonderful house plants for beginners, or if you're looking for a low maintenance plant that you can water a couple of times a month and not think or worry about, unless it's spider mite season. Other than that, they are carefree. They tolerate low light, they tolerate uneven watering, they tolerate uh, cold, dry air, which is um, normal household conditions, and um, they're just wonderful plants. They're a lot like aglaonemas. They can take a lot of abuse and they'll just keep on growing for you. They do flower. Uh, spider, I'm sorry, not spider, cast iron plants do flower, and when they flower, they flower at the base. So let's take a look here. My variegated cast iron plant is just getting done flowering. And you can see right here is an old bloom. This is a spent bloom. 
And, oh, here is a new shoot growing out of the rhizome. So that's what the flowers look like. They're very small. They're absolutely easy to miss. As you can see, they kind of just blend right in with the soil. Uh, cast iron plant flowers are usually purple or brown. These ones were purple. It occurred to me to take a peek into my uh, Milky Way cast iron plant. And this guy is blooming as well. So right down here, there's a little flower coming up. That's kind of purpley, purpley brown in color. And uh, yep, so both, both plants are in bloom and they just get a couple small flowers and that's that. So thanks for tuning in today to Cast Iron Plant Care. Uh, we'll be posting more videos as I get time. And thanks for watching today, guys. Have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.